pros live on their bikes, spending hours and hours in the saddle. And I mean, they get up to some pretty strange things. And I mean, really strange. Really strange. So in this video, we're gonna be explaining this. This. Oh, you're stinking. And even this. Oh, I'm so relieved. Oh my gosh. Mm. Odd. Mm. Some races are really long. I mean, take Milan San Roma, for example, uh, over seven hours, and sometimes you just really need a wee. You might be lucky enough and there'll be a lull in the action and you can pull over and relieve yourself. But more often than not, you'll find that the race is really on and you have to go on the move. Just excuse me one minute. Don't be too worried about losing contact with the bunch though. You can always ask a teammate for a ham helping hand. Sorry mate, I got you. Now, we probably wouldn't recommend you do this on your local club ride, but in a race, this could be the difference between winning or losing. Whoa. I needed that. Now, one thing a pro has to be really good at is consistently changing the layering of their clothing to match the conditions they're experiencing. We all know that they're pretty good at putting a rain cape on and taking it back off. But if you pay attention, you might get to see the rarely spotted and frankly more exciting under vest removal. You may have seen Sagan adjusting his bike mid race and wondered how on earth he does it while keeping control of the bike. This is for sure an advanced skill, especially when adjusting your bars, but pros adjust their bikes all the time on the go. The most common one is adjusting your brakes, especially if you have a rim brake bike. The worst thing for a pro is hearing your brakes rub on the rim. So being able to loosen the barrel adjusters mid-ride is a skill a pro needs to have down to a T. In fact, when done from alongside the team car, a rim brake adjustment is the most often faked mechanical a bike rider seems to have. Talking of fixing stuff, my bolt cage is coming loose. You got a tool for me? Ah, nice. Taking off your knee or leg warmers on the go does look like a really difficult skill to master, but with the right steps implemented, it can be done. That said, the pros make it look incredibly easy and seamless. And I mean, it is more difficult with leg warmers than with knee warmers, but this is how you do it. Step one, bring your knee warmers down to your ankles. Step two, roll your warmers round your ankle until close to your pedal. Step three, unclip your shoe and pull over your cleat and job done. Step four, clip back in and put your knee warmer back in your pocket and it's on to the next one. Grabbing food and drink from the roadside is another really important skill for a pro to have and in fact can really determine how they get on in the latter half of the bike race. Almost all races have a feed zone after around 90 kilometers, as this is when the rider will generally have gone through the first couple of bottles and some of their food. Designated feed zones are where the swanniers can park the cars and hand up the bottles. When a rider wants to grab the bottle, they'll signal to the bunch that they want to move out, pull over to the side of the road, reach out, find the swanier that's dressed in similar clothing and grab the bottle. Musettes are often easier to grab as feed zones tend to be placed where the racing is a little bit faster. Stretching. Now this sounds really easy, but when you are racing, you don't have the luxury of doing yoga poses. So this is how you stretch on the bike. So how do they do it? Well, the most common stretch is the one for your quads. Unclip your shoes and bend your leg so you rest your foot on your saddle. And if you want to give yourself a deeper stretch, then sit back on your foot. There you have it, the pros do get up to some pretty weird things. But if you're not a pro cyclist, you probably don't really need to try any of those. No, that's probably true. And if you did enjoy this video, then give it a big thumbs up. And for another video, check out this Ask the Pros.